Unbreakable bones are a real mutation that, if replicated, could redefine the future of humanity. It all started when an eight-year-old American boy fell from a second floor. Everyone panicked, and when they went to help him, they found him standing without a single scratch. After several scans, this boy had all his bones intact, but they discovered an alteration in the LRP5 gene, a microscopic error that changes the way the body builds bone. Apparently, they are just denser bones, but the more they studied it, the more they were amazed by the way this mutation transformed the bone structure. People who have it do not have exaggerated muscles, nor do they look different at first glance. But when they get hurt, the body reacts differently. The bone fibers grow more compact and solid. And the most fascinating thing is that unlike the rest of the population, these fibers never stop regenerating. Over time, the bones become increasingly hard. But what seemed like an evolutionary advantage soon began to show a side effect that no one expected. Even so, the potential was too great to ignore. And that raises an inevitable question. If we manage to copy this mutation, how far could we push the human body? For years, scientists around the world have been trying to do it. Several studies point to something promising. We could reverse one of the greatest problems of aging, osteoporosis, making our bodies stronger, more independent, and even live longer. However, this great bone strength carries some complications that are not yet fully understood. For example, there are people with this condition who suffer severe headaches or intracranial pressure simply because their own bones grow too much. But that's not the worst part. When surgery or a dental implant is required, doctors face a major problem. The bones are so hard that conventional tools cannot drill through them. Tetrachromacy. Have you ever wondered why lions see better than us at night? Or why eagles can spot tiny squirrels from kilometers away? There are people born with visual mutations that go even further than that. And it is not always an advantage. It all started when a woman went to the ophthalmologist because she felt something was wrong with her vision. She said the sky looked different, that the colors of the lights did not match what others said they saw. They thought it was light sensitivity or some optical illusion. But after several specific tests, the doctors were shocked when the explanation appeared. Her retina had an extra type of cell, a fourth cone, something most of the population does not have. The condition is called tetrachromacy, and it allows her to see millions of shades that others cannot even imagine. Literally, her color vision spectrum is wider, but here is where it gets complicated, because no one else sees what she sees. She tries to describe a color, and people look at her strangely. When she says two shades are different, they tell her they are identical. For years, she thought something was wrong with her perception, when in reality, her brain was receiving more information than the rest. This does not happen by accident. It is believed to be hereditary, and in most cases, it only occurs in women. Four types of cones in the retina, instead of three, and greater sensitivity in the brain's color processing. The result is not a super sight as such, but a different way of experiencing the visual world. A sunset does not look beautiful. It looks overwhelming. A paint store is not colorful. It is overwhelming. And often, what should be harmonious ends up being annoying. Researchers still do not know how many people live with this condition without realizing it. Because without being able to compare with others, many simply assume everyone sees the same. Hypothymesia is the brain mutation that makes you remember every detail of life as if it happened yesterday. People with hypothymesia remember dates, conversations, places, and emotions with almost total accuracy. They do not make an effort to memorize. Simply, their brain stores everything without filtering. They remember what day of the week a particular June 4th was, what they were wearing, what music was playing, and what conversations took place, and not as a vague memory, but as an exact reproduction. The cause is not fully understood. Atypical activation has been observed in brain regions linked to autobiography and emotion. But not everything is an advantage, because this precision has a price. There are no filters. The most painful moments, the losses, the arguments, return with the same intensity again and again. And over time, that takes a toll. The sleep gene mutation is more powerful than all productivity techniques combined. Sleeping little is not always a problem. For some people, it is simply normal. A study with volunteers who slept between three and five hours per night revealed something unexpected. They showed no signs of sleep deprivation. They were not exhausted, irritable, or disoriented. On the contrary, they operated more efficiently than many who slept eight hours. There, the pattern appeared. These people have a mutation in the DEC2 gene, and it is one of the most mysterious alterations known in sleep biology. This small genetic tweak affects the production of proteins that regulate circadian cycles. In short, their body needs less sleep to do the same. Four well-slept hours, and the system is ready. No daytime drowsiness, 
no accumulated fatigue. What this mutation does is compress the entire deep rest process, allowing the body to regenerate in half the time others need. They have less light sleep, more restorative sleep, and distribute it more efficiently. From the outside, they seem hyperactive. They wake up on their own, do not need an alarm clock, and while others are just starting the day, they have already completed several tasks. But that can also become a problem, because this level of constant performance becomes addictive. Many people with the mutation take years to discover that what they have is not insomnia or anxiety. Simply, their body does not need to disconnect, as long as the rest of the population. Cyper. There are some people who do not feel pain, neither burns, nor fractures, nor cuts. They also do not sweat, even when their body temperature rises dangerous. This condition is called CIPA, congenital insensitivity to pain with anhydrosis, a genetic mutation that disables two fundamental systems, the ability to register physical damage and the thermal regulation mechanism. The hardest part is that for years it goes unnoticed, a child falls and does not cry. They burn themselves and do not react. Everything seems like pain tolerance until infections, broken bones and extreme fever appear without anyone seeing it coming because pain, although unpleasant, is a warning signal. And without that signal, everything depends on constant observation, checking the body every day, being alert to hits that do not hurt, wounds that do not warn. Living with Cypa does not mean being stronger. It means not knowing when your body is in danger, because it simply does not tell you. Super taster mutation. Some foods trigger rejection from the first bite, not due to texture nor prejudice, but because they activate an extraordinary sensory response. In certain people, the TAS2R38 gene has a variant that increases sensitivity to flavors. This group is known as super tasters. They do not need to taste much to detect compounds that others fail to notice. The problem is that this sensitivity comes without a filter. Everything comes with more intensity. Broccoli, black coffee, even certain sweeteners. For them, everyday food is perceived as more extreme. And although it may seem like an advantage, in practice many options become uncomfortable or impossible to enjoy. The palate reacts before the thought, and it is not something they can easily explain. Saying something tastes strange when others enjoy it creates distance and although their taste perception is technically superior everyday experience ends up being more limited immunity to mosquitoes while mosquitoes devour you in the summer there are people who seem to wear an endless repellent what seems like luck has a genetic explanation a variant of a gene called ABCC11 alters the type of chemical compounds the body releases through sweat in short these people do not emit the signal that attracts mosquitoes for them they go unnoticed they do not smell better, they simply smell different. And even if they do not know it, their body is operating with such a reduced scent profile that it is as if they had a biochemical invisibility field. While the rest slather themselves in repellent, they can cross a tropical forest without a single bite. In some populations, it is also associated with less body odor and a different type of earwax. Subtle changes, but they speak of a biological system programmed to go unnoticed. The sprint gene. In certain elite athletes, there is a gene that appears more frequently than in the rest. It is called ACTN3, and it encodes a key protein in fast twitch muscle fibers, the ones responsible for explosive movements like running, jumping, or lifting weights. Not everyone has it active. In fact, about 20% of the population completely lacks this protein. And although that does not prevent exercise, it does influence the type of performance the body can achieve. Those who express this gene have greater efficiency in brief and intense efforts. It is common in sprinters, gymnasts, and powerlifters. Their muscles respond better to immediate stimulus. The body is optimized for acceleration. But the same trait that enhances explosiveness can make endurance more difficult. Because where there is speed, there is usually less efficient in the long term. People with hyperosmia have a sense of smell that is on another level. For them, everything leaves a trace. Food, humidity, perfumes. They can even detect emotional states through the type of sweat. The cause lies in increased sensitivity in olfactory receptors, combined with more active brain processing. Sometimes it is genetic. Other times, it appears after hormonal or neurological changes. The problem is that this level of perception cannot be turned off. Many cannot wear perfumes without getting a headache. Riding the subway becomes a difficult experience to endure. And what for others is just the smell of humidity. For them can be a specific combination of mold, dust, and poorly rinsed cleaning products. The cervical rib. Not everyone is born with the same number of bones. Some people, without knowing it, have an extra rib right at the base of the neck. It is not part of the usual human skeleton design, and in many cases goes unnoticed. But when it grows too much or forms in the wrong position, it can press on nerves or blood vessels, causing discomfort in the arm, shoulder, 
shoulder or neck. It does not provide additional protection, nor does it improve mobility. It is simply there due to a variation during embryonic development, a small biological deviation that the body allowed and that sometimes, years later, starts to make noise. The GRIA2 gene mutation is an alteration in the way the brain processes fear. It is not bravery nor cold blood. In certain studies, cases have been observed of people with mutations in the GRIA2 gene, which affects receptors related to the danger response. The result? A minimal or completely absent reaction to situations that normally trigger alertness. They do not freeze, they do not avoid risk, and they do not exaggerate it. They simply do not perceive it with the same intensity, and that completely changes how they make decisions. It may seem useful, as today fear is the greatest enemy when pursuing big goals, but living without fear also means not detecting limits. Driving at high speeds, exposing oneself to dangerous environments, or taking physical or social risks without measuring the consequences. Fear is a protection system, and when it is disconnected, the world becomes different, but not necessarily safer. Dystochiasis sounds technical, unimportant, but in reality, it is the reason why some people blink and feel like they have sand in their eyes all day. This is a genetic condition in which a second set of eyelashes grows right on the eyelid edge. It is a micro variation, generally associated with the F or X C2 gene. At first glance, it may seem like a curious aesthetic trait, but it is not always harmless. That second group of eyelashes sometimes grows in irregular directions or inward, constantly rubbing the eye surface. That can cause irritation, chronic tearing, or even corneal damage if untreated. Interestingly, many people live with it for years without diagnosis. They only feel that their eyes are more sensitive. Double whirl. Most people have a single swirl on their scalp. Others, too. And although it may seem like only an aesthetic detail, that small difference has its origin in an uncommon genetic configuration. The double hair crown alters the hair growth pattern. It is not a disease nor a defect, but it does complicate simple things like combing or wearing a hat. The hair grows in opposite directions, as if two centers of gravity were pulling the same field at the same time. It is not known for certain why it occurs. It has been linked to genetics, but also to certain processes in embryonic development. In some studies, it has been associated with brain lateralization or certain hereditary traits, although there are no firm conclusions. The curious thing is that although it does not cause pain or affect health, many people experience it as a daily battle in front of the mirror, because no matter how hard they try, the hair always ends up twisting on itself twice. Don't forget to support this type of content by subscribing and watching this other very curious video that you will love.